I've got to tell you right now, if I pick up one more magazine, which is a special sex edition, or see one more documentary on sex, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's far too much information as far as I'm concerned. I'm sorry. When I drink a slab of beer and go home with a total stranger, I don't want to know what actually happens. I think the best sort of comedy, well, for me anyway, comes from your own experiences and comedy that's maybe based in or has a little bit of truth in there somewhere and you know i've done routines about men masturbating in front of me in laundromats which is another little experience i'm thrilled to say that i've had so thankfully life just keeps serving me up these magnificent situations and i can turn them into comedy this is a true story i'm afraid i was having lunch with my father dad's a bit of an offbeat kind of guy and i made the mistake of telling him what i was actually thinking I admitted to him, I admitted to him that I've been feeling a bit depressed lately and my father turned to me without missing a beat and said, do you think you'd be happier if you had a breast reduction? <laughs> and I had to say, well, no, <laughs> but I might be happier if you had a lobotomy. <laughs> he had made that leap from point A, which was my child is unhappy, to point B, which was so obviously she should just have her judge locked. In the early 80s, we had all these comedy venues around town, which were now beginning to show a lot of promise. There were a lot of up-and-coming comedians, there were people doing all sorts of comedy, musical, sketch comedy, stand-up comedy. And yet, if you went out into the suburbs, went knocked on any door at 8 o'clock at night and walked in, they would be watching American sitcom. <laughs> or they might be watching a British sitcom. I'm sorry. The real gap was in television. The real gap was in comedy for everybody. Television is of the mainstream and inevitably behind the times in a lot of ways. And it was very behind the times then because it hadn't caught up with what was a social phenomenon in the community at large that had grown out of the early 70s. It took them 15 years to catch up. But what that meant was people were really ready for it, those who wanted to do it. Okay, so we put in three tired British comedy and a tired new variety show and um, we toss in a few ABC pretzels <laughs> and uh, just making a laughing stock of the ABC. <laughs> well, Australia standing in it was the first intentional comedy made by the ABC in Melbourne. They'd made some very funny things in the past, but they'd been called dramas or musicals, I think. It's a wonderful thing, television. It's the only medium in the world where you can see the back of your head. Look at that. <laughs> History books are a thing of the past. With the aid of modern technology, we can now record oral history. Oral history of Australian politics, take one. Can you tell us, in your own words, what do you remember about the dramatic political events of 1975? Yes. 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 It was the first time Melbourne comedians of our generation had been given access to television on an ongoing basis rather than being a one-off oddity on a talk show. Again. It also had three women in it who didn't wear bikinis and didn't climb up ladders in libraries so you could look up their dresses and uh, they, they developed characters and personas of their own. Um, and that was unique. I, I can remember at the time thinking that I'd not ever seen a sketch comedy show from anywhere in the world that allowed women um, equal footing. <laughs> Um, I'm Debbie Wilson. And I'm Tim Muktananda. I don't know if you know, but I'm in I this know. amazing um, new wave band called The Room Clearers, right? Wow! Freak me out, Tim. That's really uncanny because I know. I know a guy in The Room Clearers. 
<laughs> Me too. Well, I'm not, but like, Tim and Debbie people. were quite shocking Australian characters at the time because they didn't fit into the rural yokel or the, the drunken ocker mate. They were a new generation of Australian characters. Someone such as you who has a really secure position in the unemployment industry yeah, right. <laughs> um, should view your doll check right? right not as a source of social insecurity right. but as a ticket to spiritual awareness i do i do i, do, I, know, like, I, know. I really feel sorry for the so-called haves with their jacuzzis and their in-ground swimming pools um are they really happy tim well they look pretty happy to me <laughs> I think that it was important to introduce those characters into television. Um, for us, it was, I guess, uh, just another step along the way. But for people who hadn't seen the Melbourne comedy scene and who weren't familiar with the development there, um, people from outside metropolitan Melbourne, it was quite um, startling, I think. There's the office boy. Well, don't laugh, he's from a broken home. 